Good morning. I hope that you are well. Uh, it's good to see you guys. I think a number of you have come from school. Uh, I hope that the term went well. Uh, thank you for the prayer. I think I won't pray again. Uh, I'll just get right into the message. For those of us who are here, my name is Simon. <laughs> Sorry, Simon Nyaika. Uh, I serve here. I pray here. Uh, yeah, I'm here. I'm always around here. Yes, so if you've been attending, or if you attended last Sunday, last Sunday was our first Sunday in April. It was the 3rd of April. And we began a new theme. Uh, and that theme is, does anyone know? The power of the gospel in bringing hope. And last Sunday we had, anyone remember who spoke to us last Sunday? I, I allow chorus answer, yes. Prof, wonderful. Uh, Mr., some call him teacher. Teacher Prof Philip was here and he spoke from Colossians, Colossians chapter one, and he was speaking about the supremacy. Wow, wow, wow. Very proud of you guys. You guys were listening. The supremacy of Christ. So we'll be studying the book of Colossians this month, and today we'll go to chapter two. And so because of time, I am going to be as brief as possible, and I pray for God's grace to do that. The theme today uh, is the sufficiency of Christ. Or oh, I would say the sufficiency of knowing Christ. The sufficiency of knowing Christ. And I have a question. What is that thing that you know so well that even if they woke you up at 3.31 a.m., you would confidently and clearly talk about it. Your name. I think I am also like Anthony. I wouldn't forget my name, even the spelling. Uh, your age. Yes, my sister here says her age. Ariana. Sound of Revival. Those who are wondering what that is, it's a song by a group called The Collective UG, and Ariana likes it so much. Uh -huh. Anything else? Your name, your age? Chicken. If they woke you up at 3.31 a.m., you will talk about chicken. Wow, wow, wow. Awesome, yes? Sleep. Okay, you will talk about why they've woken you up. <laughs> Out of you. Yes, sir. Premier League scores. I had that part of my list here, knowing there would be some people. So if you want the latest scores from yesterday, our brother there has the, <laughs> the full list for you. <laughs> How about series? Anyone here who likes series? Bridgerton. Okay, 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 okay. Uh -huh. Some of us don't know what that is, and it's okay. It's okay. It's very okay. You know, so there are so many things that we know. Perhaps it's a friend. If they woke you up at 3.31 a.m., you would be able to describe this friend of yours. Yeah? You know how they are doing, what's all about them. It is, perhaps it's family. You know how each of your family members is doing. Perhaps, you know, it's, it's, it's entertainment, athletics, a particular sport. So there are things that we know so well. Aha. Now, Canon Grace here has mentioned something very important. God, compared to these things that we've mentioned, how well do we know God? How well do you know God? How well do I know God? God. How well do you know Jesus? Isn't it? 
how well do I know Jesus? We claim to be his followers. Not so. That's what being Christian means. A follower of Christ. How well do we know this person we claim to be following? Do we know him as much as we know the scores for Premier League fixtures? Do we know him as much as we know these video games that we like, that we play, FIFA, you know, Pace, and Motor Combat, and all these things? I know some of them. <laughs> you know, do we know him as much as we know the celebrities of our day? Not so. The people that we follow on Instagram and Twitter, is it? Yes, Twitter. Twitter they also follow, right? How well, how well, how well do we know the Lord? The Lord that we sing about every Sunday. Is it important to know Jesus? The sufficiency of knowing Christ. One of the challenges that the people Paul was writing to was that their knowledge of Christ was being put up against a certain special knowledge. They were being taught yeah, that there's a special kind of knowledge you need to know. Yes, there's knowing Jesus, but there are deeper things, isn't it? There are deeper truths that were being exalted above the knowledge of, of Christ. And I won't get into that because of time. But if you read chapter 2, verses 4 and 8, it's very clear what Paul is saying. This is what it says. Did we take a reading? This is what it says. Verse 4 of Colossians 2. I, I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. That's verse 4. Verse 8 says, See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. So he was saying there are teachings out there that are captivating. They are dangerous to the extent that they can actually lead you astray and away from God. Yeah? I'm sure that you guys have heard, you've heard about this whole discussion on our sexuality as human beings. That it is now a choice. Not so. Yeah? It no longer depends on your creator. Yeah? That when you're born, you can choose, right, whether to be a man, okay, to be a boy, or a girl, or to be both, not so. You may wake up today and you feel manly, but when you wake up next week, you feel girly. So why not be in the middle? Not so. It's up to you. You get to choose. Fine sounding argument, not so. Or oh, none. Not so. Why be limited by male or female or both? I don't want any. Right? I don't want any. Fine sounding argument that will lead you away from Christ and God. How well do you know Jesus? How well do I know Jesus? So as I conclude, <laughs> I'm too fast. The time, I think I have five minutes to go. Why is it important to know Jesus? Guys, we will not love him unless we know him. Think about all the things you love, you love them because you know them, because you've experienced them, because you've, if it's a person, you've met them, you've spoken to them, 
If it's a series, you've watched it. You've binged on it. If it's soccer, you've done research on all the players of that team that you like from the 80s. Not so. You know because you love. So the deeper question is, do we love Jesus? Because if we truly love him, then we will know him. Or is it if we truly know him, you know, they are related. Yeah? They are related. So we struggle. And I have a list of things here that I wrote. One cannot love someone or something they don't know. So knowing him will influence how we deal with sin, for example. I read a story, well, not a story, an article one time, and the author made a case or put across a thought that I'll never forget. Okay, not never forget. Let me not make <laughs> extreme statements, but it stayed with me. And he said, you think about the time when you're in the, that thing that tempts you the most. Think about that thing. You're in the heat of that temptation. You feel that you will die if you don't do that thing. Isn't it? If it's stealing some money, if it's cheating in an exam, if it's watching, you know, an explicit movie, video, you know, if it's listening, to, I don't know. But that thing, you're in that moment where you're saying, God, even now you, you can see this. You would understand. And while you're right there, someone walks in with a bag. Anyone with a bag here? Hey, we stopped carrying bag. No, that one is even too small. With a bag, a bag where one million dollars can fit. I've never seen such a bag, but... That person walks up to you and says, if you walk away from that temptation, I'm going to give you this $1 million right here. What would you do? No, you can't help it. Not so. You'll continue doing what you wanted to do. Is that right? Is it right? Anyone? But you can feel free. Say for me, ah, man, this temptation is too hard. Yes, Ayana. You will take the one million dollars. I am like you. You take that money. Not so. You take that money. This temptation in that moment somehow loses its power over you. Because there is an alternative that is far more superior. That is better. Not so. Guys, if you take that thought... And remember that it is God. Not so. It's God we are violating. Yeah? It's God we are shunning and walking away from every single time. What is one million dollars compared to, to God? We struggle to love him because we don't know him. We struggle to see that he is worth more than a mere million dollars. Not so. We struggle because we don't know him. What if we knew him? What if we knew what a blessing Jesus is? What if we understood what he has done for us? Not just now but for eternity, that all will be well, regardless of what comes, that not even death can threaten and scare you, because through him you are a child of God. What is a million dollars if we knew him? What about the shame and the guilt that we struggle with, the regret that we have? When he takes all that away, at the cross, what is a million dollars? Not so. That we are forgiven. Do we know him? Do we know him? What about fear? Not so. The things we are afraid of in life, to know that he has overcome every enemy of God. 
that you can live in freedom, that you have nothing to fear, not even Satan himself. Not even the devil himself. Why? Not because of your strength or your wisdom or experience, but because of his, that through the cross, Jesus defeated the enemy. Do we know him? Do we know him? The sufficiency of knowing Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. This Jesus who loves you, when you read Paul's letters, he loves you with a love that's beyond understanding or comprehension. Why don't we pray? Because our time is up. Father, you know us completely. There's nothing we can hide from you. But you love us so much as well. We are here, each of us. You've made it possible for us to be here. I pray that you will challenge us to seek you, that we may know you for ourselves. That we may love you supremely above the idols in this world. That we may live for you. Friends, in one minute, I invite you to speak to the Lord in your own words. Perhaps your prayer is that, Lord, help me to know you so that I may love you, so that I may love you more and more each and every day, so that my life will reflect my love for you. Lord, help us today and always in Jesus' name. Amen.